It was hailed as a marvel of modern manufacturing. At one time, 100,000 people stoked the ovens, turned out the parts, and assembled the cars. It was an icon of American industry. Its name was simply the Rouge. The name came from its location, here where the Rouge River meets up with the Detroit River. The idea was unmistakably a Henry Ford vision. He called it vertical integration, a plant that would consume raw materials and spit out a finished vehicle all at one site. I don't think we've ever seen vertical integration on quite the same scale we saw with Ford Motor Company uh, and, and the Ford Rouge. I think that's the difference. Uh, it's not a new idea, uh, nor was mass production but they're applied in such radical ways. Construction of the first building started in 1917, designed by noted Detroit architect Albert Kahn. The first products out of the plant were the Eagle Boats, subchasers for the Navy. By 1920, the Rouge was building Fords and tractors. And finally, in 1927, production started on the famous Model A. By the end of the decade, there were 93 structures on the Rouge site capable of turning out everything from electrical power to rolled steel, from tires to sheets of glass. To have that vision and be able to implement it was, was incredible. The size of the crews, the, the planning, the detail, the incredible detail. I sit and look at the pyramids in Egypt and wonder, right? Well, this, uh, this had to match every bit of uh, the complexity. Raw materials arrived on Ford-owned rail lines and Ford ships. Parts moved on 120 miles of conveyors and 100 miles of railroad track crisscrossed the complex. The size, the magnitude of it. I mean, you, the, the Ford Rouge, you're talking about, what, nearly 100,000 workers there by the late 1920s? I mean, it's an army. The Rouge people and their stories of striving, struggling, and emerging are what made the Rouge more than metal and mortar. There were people that had nothing in life their parents had nothing in life, and they were able to get a job here. There were people that had dad and son working side by side, dads and daughters working side by side. Workers struggled at the 1937 Battle of the Overpass on Miller Road, and they persevered through the strike of 1941 to organize as UAW Local 600. Through it all, the Rouge became a community with a strong heart and sense of its own identity. People just love this place. Every day they walk in the door, there's something, something new, something challenging. They feel very, very comfortable as this place is their second home. By the 70s, the once mighty Rouge plant was showing signs of age. Decentralization was the new king. As work was farmed out to other factories, the manufacturing giants slowed down. So in 1999, when Bill Ford said he was going to give new life to the Rouge, Many people wondered why. So I'm truly pleased to announce today that the Ford Motor Company is initiating a complete environmental and aesthetic revitalization of our Rouge manufacturing complex. The revitalization of the Rouge complex is a terrific opportunity to demonstrate sustainability by transforming the icon of the 20th century industrial manufacturing into the model of a 21st century manufacturing center. And for the Ford family, once again, to realize the importance of the Rouge and what it, what it means to the company and what it means to the community and the workers. Uh, we were very, very pleased with the announcement. It's really his leadership that's saying, business has to be responsible to the earth and to society. And taking out of a place for 80 years and then abandoning is not the right thing. And so a massive demolition and reconstruction effort began to transform the Rouge into a model of 21st century manufacturing. The new Dearborn truck plant will incorporate design elements that serve workers' needs. Abundant lighting, cooler air in the summer, and ergonomically designed work modules. Today's manufacturing demands extreme flexibility, and the new world-class assembly lines will be capable of handling three different vehicle platforms and nine different models. 80% of the tooling will be reusable on the main line. That uh, gives us the flexibility we need so that we don't have to retool an entire body shop every time. A driving force in this plan is the lean manufacturing concept and empowering the operating teams. 
The focus is on the operators and what they do and making them happy and making sure they can do their jobs correctly the first time. In the past, it's been you support the plant manager. But we have to flip this around now and we have to support the operator. Regard for the environment is also key to the revitalization effort. The Ford Rouge Center will apply some revolutionary initiatives, starting with the world's largest living roof. This plant-covered roof will provide insulation and hold several inches of rainfall, dramatically affecting the Rouge area watershed. Shallow ditches of plants and porous paving with water retention beds will also improve stormwater management. And the phytoremediation process, which uses natural plants throughout the complex, will also help rid the soil of contaminants. You have to have a business case, uh, or you're not ultimately sustainable, and this certainly is. This saves us money as opposed to the conventional way of dealing with uh, a brownfield site of this nature. But the biggest single key to the Rouge revitalization goes back to people, people with a passion for what they do. I'm blessed to be a part of this revitalization, to see people, uh, lives being changed. It's going to bring life to uh, individuals and help them to improve on life and have a place to work. I don't think that from hundreds of jobs that they could have offered me, I could have gotten a better job than this one at Ford Motor Company at this time. We want to get back to the point where it once again regains that um, uh, the idea of, of having it be a world-class lean manufacturing complex, and that's the way we're pushing.